coronavirus and how it's impacting life, health care workers, and our economy. Let's bring you up to speed of what we've learned today. 35 Hoosiers have now died from coronavirus across Indiana. 66% of our COVID-19 deaths were men, 34% women. We have more than 1,700 positive cases across Indiana. Over 11,000 Hoosiers have been tested. And now our state is preparing for a surge of more patients and how to take care of them. The surge plan calls for moving less critical patients to alternate facilities. Those could be neighborhood hospitals that would be used for inpatient care, medical clinics that could be used for inpatient care, state-owned hospitals such as the unopened floors at the Neurodiagnostic Institute Hospital in Indianapolis, and the Richmond State Hospital. They will also reopen closed facilities. The state also called today for any retired health care workers to help fight the coronavirus. And the governor made this plea to Hoosiers. I'm pleading on a daily basis that this is not a game. This is serious. Um, you may feel like you're Superman, but I guarantee you, you're not. Now, the state health department expects the surge to happen sometime between mid and late April or perhaps as late as mid-May. The CDC has now put out a new travel advisory in place for New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. That tri-state area now considered the epicenter of the coronavirus outbreak. For 14 days now, the CDC is urging people to halt non-essential domestic travel from those hotspots. The mayor of New York will also start imposing fines for not social distancing if you're in public. This as the death toll continues to rise. In New York City, they're now scrambling to provide more hospital beds. They're building a middle, uh, mobile hospital. They're doing that right in the heart of Central Park. That will open tomorrow. Also, there is uh, comfort that is docking at the New York Harbor. It will serve as a floating thousand bed hospital for non-coronavirus patients and that will free up beds that are desperately needed on land. We still have to take care of pregnant women who have to deliver. We have to take care of patients who need emergency uh, surgery. We have to take care of kids. Concerns are also growing about the lack of personal protective or what we've been calling PPE for healthcare workers that as ERs are packed in the Bronx. We are seeing a lot of younger patients that are coming through the door that are sicker as well. And that, that is surprising and a little scary. The last five days have been the busiest ever recorded by EMS in New York. Also today, we are learning from Johnson & Johnson now saying that they're moving forward with testing out a vaccine for the coronavirus. They're going to begin the first phase of human trials in September. And if all goes well, the first round of vaccines could be sent out by the early part of next year. J&J &J also revealing plans to devote more than a billion dollars for vaccine research and development. Also today, the FDA issued an emergency use authorization. This is for a pair of anti-malaria drugs to treat hospitalized COVID-19 patients. Now this will allow for 30 million doses of the drugs to be donated to the strategic national stockpile. They would only be distributed and prescribed when a clinical trial is not available or feasible. So while there's still no approved treatment for COVID-19, the FDA says these drugs do show promise However, clinical trials are still needed. And perhaps you, if you didn't catch it on TV, you heard about it later on the Today Show this morning. That's where Dr. Deborah Bricks told Savannah Guthrie that she's worried about every single city here in the U.S. And she warned of up to 200,000 deaths if we do things almost perfectly. That's pretty shocking. So I asked today the head of IU Health what he thought about that projection. Here's Dennis Murphy. Uh, this is no different than uh, people uh, predicting the weather. Uh, we've probably got three or four different epidemiological models that uh, sort of project how many people get impacted, how many deaths there are. And um, I'm never one to quote a single number because I think it's more likely a range. Uh, and that may be somewhere at the upper end of the range that I've read or seen so far. But um, you know, again, our hope is we, we've got to make a difference that that's not the number uh, that actually happens. 
That's Dennis Murphy, and he happens to be in charge of the state's largest hospital, which is Methodist, right in the heart of Marion County, and also 15 others, not only in urban areas, but suburban and rural areas as well. Our conversation with Dennis Murphy about his concerns and what he sees right now here in central Indiana and across the state is coming up in a little bit, Scott, at 530. All right, looking forward to that, Ann. Thanks. Small business owners here in Marion County could be receiving some additional help. The city and Indy Chamber set up the Rapid Response Loan Program. Here's how, what's going to happen here. Small businesses can get up to 25000 bucks to help cover immediate needs. That could really help while they await federal money, which could take four to six weeks to get. It's critical that we help small businesses weather this temporary storm. Because when the time comes that it is safe to reopen shops, we're going to need them. Right now, they need us. Now, the goal here is to raise $10 million for small businesses needing loans. So far, they've got $3 million. That money is from the city, the chamber, and Anthem, which contributed $1 million. Well, we've got some major news from Macy's tonight. That company now plans to furlough a majority of its 125,000 employees because of the ongoing pandemic. The company says that pandemic has taken a heavy toll on business, forcing them to close over 700 stores nationwide this month alone. Macy's websites are still open for business orders right now, but those online sales only make up about a fifth of Macy's overall revenue. And Kroger tonight is putting out the Help Wanted sign. They're looking to bring in tens of thousands of workers. The grocery giant says they want to hire 20,000 people and that's in addition to the 23,000 they've hired over the past few weeks. Grocery stores, as you know, across the country have really seen a spike over the past couple of months as people try and hunker down during this pandemic. There's also an Indianapolis sports that makes sports gear that now is helping people stay safe by making face masks and that's not all to help out to the community. Steve Jefferson is working from home and from there it's where he talked to the owner about this company about getting these masks in to as many people's hands who need them right now. Well, working from home, I found out about the small Indianapolis company making face masks while talking on the telephone to a friend looking for her own mask. The company is hoping to have a huge impact on the spread of COVID-19. We basically created a mask that had a, a second layer to it. Darren Graham talked to us over Zoom from the Millennium Gear Sewing Warehouse. He demonstrated two styles of reusable face masks his company is making. It has like a texture in there. Um, on the flip side, it has another layer of material here. And then here's a pocket. Here's the actual filter. The COVID-19 outbreak has forced even his employees to wear masks and practice social distancing. They already have business and personal orders for 8,000 masks and other gear to protect people. We actually, like I was saying, took on some gowns as well that we're working on and getting prototype done with so we can get that out towards the end of this week. So we'll actually need more uh, sewers. And just like some of us, some seamstress will work from home making the masks. Now, to find out how you can order your own reusable face mask, go to WTHR.com. Thank you. The demand for groceries and other supplies means truckers cannot stay home. Deliveries, as you probably can imagine, are nonstop right now. Our Rich and I talked with truckers today who already knew their job was essential before the pandemic. You may not like being stuck at home, but that makes traffic a lot lighter for the 18-wheelers still out there delivering the food and supplies we need. Truck drivers are feeling a little more appreciated these days. I always knew the work I did was important. I think the public is getting a little more perspective of what truckers do and that we are the lifeline of America. Spot Freight employees delivered free box lunches to truck drivers at the Aldi Distribution Center in Greenwood to say thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. you thank you. Well, I think just being here and showing them that we care because a lot of people, I think, they don't understand what truck drivers are doing right now, but they're really keeping the nation moving at this time. Every driver that's transporting, you know, grocery products is kind of essential at all times, no matter what's going on, you know what I mean? So I don't know if we're more essential. We're just
been working a little bit more hours. People just seem to be taking a little more notice in the trucking community. Maybe showing just a tiny bit more respect. You guys have a good day. Thank you very much. Lunch to go, an appreciation of the truckers moving the food closer to home. All right, Rich, thank you. We've got all of our coronavirus stories in one easy place to find. It's on our website. Just go to WTHR.com slash coronavirus.